Say amen. amen. If you don't say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Amen. amen. Wait a minute. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, though a major prophet, because he wrote a lot. Chapter 30, verse 17. And it says, he is a restorer of health. Somebody he'd say he's a restorer restore. of, of health. A heart fixer, a mind regulator. And he will heal all deepest wounds. Yeah. How many believe that? Amen. No matter how deep, y'all hear that? Yeah. No matter how out of control your sickness may be. God is a healer. Yeah. Somebody howl out, God, God is a healer. Today's topic is Jehovah Rapha, right. the Lord who heals. Subtopic is God's healing power. You may be seated. Right. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, comes at this particular moment of his life, very young. And he begins to speak to a nation, and he's young. And he's a weeping prophet because he's He's lamenting. That's right. He's, all right, he's actually getting ready to start lamenting. It's towards the end of the chapter. So he's getting ready to lament. And he's getting ready to cry and preach at the same time. All right. But one thing Jeremiah knew that, <laughs> that God is a healer. Yes, he is. He's a bomb in Gilead. Yeah. Yeah. He can heal the deepest wounds. Yes, yeah, come on. Can he? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. It says it right there. No matter how deep yeah. the wound may be, come on. God can heal. Have you ever experienced deep wounds in your life? Yeah. Oh, I, I, come on now. I know I have more than that. I'm, I'm 40. I, I know I, I'm young still. I, I know I have more uh, uh, testimonies than that. They can say I have experienced deeper wounds. Yeah. The deepest wounds, the, the most hurtful wounds. Yeah. They were deep. And they hurt and they cut like a knife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were out of control. Yeah. But some kind of way God healed yeah. those wounds. Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah. Do we have any testimonies to say that God healed yeah. those wounds? Yeah. They may be old wounds. They may be new wounds. But God healed those wounds. And we must understand that not only that, but God is a restorer. Yeah. <laughs> He's a restorer. He can restore you. How many of you have ever been restored? Amen. Restored to health. Restored. Yeah. He, 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 can, he can restore you. He can restore you who you are. He can restore your mindset. He can, he can restore your money. He can restore who you are. He can restore your body. He can restore your health. He can restore. He can definitely restore yeah. Yeah. your image. But God can restore you. Yeah. Even when it feels like you can't be restored. Yeah. Even when it feels like your reputation has been destroyed. Yeah. That it's a disaster. And there's no more. But no matter how out of control 
whole it may be the situation. Yeah. yeah. God can heal. Yes, he can. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I don't care if the doctor told you you have stage four cancer. Yeah. God, if he wants to heal your body, yeah. he can heal. Yeah. He can deliver. Yeah. He can conquer because he's God and he has complete control. Yeah. Isn't that amazing to know that? That we serve a God who has the capacity yeah. to do those things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And then Psalm 30, Psalm book 30, verse 2. It says, Lord, my God, I called you. I called to you for help. <laughs> and you healed me. Yeah. That's David. Yeah. There was a time in David's life where he felt like it was a near-death experience. He was, he was that sick or, or that hurt. Because yeah. remember, this is the man of war. He, yeah. he yeah. fought a lot in battle. But there was a time in his life where he had a near-death experience. Yeah. And he said, I called for your help. And you heard me. Right. Have you ever called for God help me? Yeah. He heard you. Yeah. You were in war. Yeah. You were in battle. You was in distress. Yeah. But some kind of way, when you called on the name of the Lord, He came to your rescue. You called Mama, but Mama couldn't come. You called Daddy, but Daddy couldn't come. You called your sister. You called your brother, but they couldn't move. But some kind of way, when you called on the name of the Lord, he came to your rescue. He's a unique, unique healer. He, he's a God that can heal at any time. He's a God that can move at any time. He's a God that can fix any situation. He's a God that can change your mind. He's a God that can take control of every situation. Somebody holler out, he's in control. Regardless of your experience, God is in control. Yes, he is. And then in Psalm, the book of Psalm, the same book, 103, 2 through 5. 103, verses 2 through 5. It says, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins. Y'all hear that? Who forgives all your sins and heals all your what? Diseases. That's amazing. You mean to tell me you'll heal every disease? No matter what the disease is? No matter if it's AIDS? No matter if it's diabetes? No matter if it's cancer? You mean to tell me no matter if it's COVID that you will come through and you will heal my body? Yeah. Yeah. I know he will. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, he will. All right. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion yeah. who redeems yeah. your life. How many of you have been redeemed? Mm -hmm. yeah. God is the redeemer. Yeah. Let the redeemed yeah. of the Lord say so. If he's your redeemer, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he redeemed you and brought you out, if he redeemed you and kept you, if he has redeemed you and, he, and took you out of that mess, took you out of that pain, took you out of that trauma, took you out of that messed up place. I don't know about you, baby, but I ain't been saved all my life. And I know what God has brought me from. You might look at my life and want to bless me. And want to talk about what I've been through. And want to talk about my past and my past situation. And how bad I was. And all that kind of stuff. But I'm here to tell you, God is a redeemer. He has washed me. Washed me. Somebody say he's washed me. Why is no? How many of you have been washed? <laughs> Have you ever been washed? <laughs> Some of you are sitting there with your good hair on and act like that you ain't never been through nothing. But God has washed me. I ain't ashamed to tell you about why I come from. It ain't no hidden secret. That's a testimony. Tell you how good God is and what he can do for you. And how he can bring you out. And he can wash you. Why is this jacket? He can wash you. Why is snow? been through nothing. Like you're a total different person. That's what God can do. Oh, somebody shout yes! Yeah. 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 God can do it. 
He can do it. He can do it. Won't he do it? He can do it. He can do it. I'm a living testimony, God. He can, he can bring you out. He can, he can wash you. He can redeem you. He can place your feet on solid ground. He'll take you out of one place and put you into another place. He'll move you out of one position, put you in another position. And have folks hating on you. And have folks talking about you. And have folks mad at you. Somebody holler out if you don't have no haters. You ain't popping. <laughs> Psalm 103. Come on, come on. In that verse 2 through 5 I just talked about. Yeah. These earthly gifts from God. Uh -huh. It includes forgiveness of sin, uh -huh. recovery from sickness, and deliverance from death. Come on, all right. So forgiveness of sin is number one. Yeah. Okay. Number two is recovery from yeah. sickness. Yeah. Number three, deliverance from death. Number four, abundant love and kindness and mercy. <laughs> abundant love, kindness, and mercy. And number five, the last one, food to sustain life. Food to sustain life. If you need to say it again, just rewind the video when you get home. <laughs> I try to have it up sometime today, but you just need to go, go to it and watch it and rewind it. And fast forward. That's all right, but God gives power to the weak. Yes, yeah. he does. Yes, he does. Yes, have you ever been weak? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. The Bible says when you're weak, that's when you're strong. That's when you're strong. That's it, that's it. And when you're strong, that's when you're, that's when you're really weak. Because you begin to depend on yourself. And when you depend on yourself and you take God out of the equation, yeah. you're weak. Yeah. You ain't going to be able to make this battle. You're not going to be able to survive this battle. Because some battles, you just won't win. That's yeah. right. That's right. I want y'all to hear that now. I know, I know y'all Y'all been pumped up and fired up about winning every battle, but that's not. I, ain't, I haven't won every battle. Right. Really haven't. Some, some battles, okay. and something about it, when you, when, when you a winner, and you, that's all you know how to do is win. Yeah. I don't know if anybody ever plays sports, but if it is something that you, you you just know, that's all you know is I can win, I can win, but if something happens when you lose. Yeah. Some people don't take losing. No. They don't take it lightly. They don't take it good. It's not a good thing for them to lose. But what happens when you lose? Come on, come on. You just lose. That's it, that's it, that's it. But you live. It's a fight of the day. Yeah, I remember that Friday. <laughs> But you live to fight another day. You live to keep going. You live to keep pushing. The, uh, uh, who was that? Dunning McClurkin said, when you fall down, yeah. you get up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So all you're really doing, hey man, this is another day of living. Yeah. It's another day of living for the Lord. It's another day, another day of pressing for the Lord. I must yeah. press towards the mark of the high calling, which is who? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's it. That's, it. that's what I'm pressing for. That's what I'm going after. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm going after God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 and 31. And I think I have two more and I'm done. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 and 31. Very familiar text. It says, he gives power to the weak. Mm -hmm. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. That's it. That's those who wait on the Lord, he shall renew yep. their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run. And not get rid of They shall walk yeah. and not faint. Isn't that good news? God's power. God gives power when you are weak. Yes, he does. Even the young shall get weak. Even the, 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 the most in shape, the most muscle bound, they get weak. They get tired and they get faint. But while we're running this race, do not. Do your best. That's it, that's do your best to not faint. Yeah. Do your best to not give in. That's it. That's do, it. do your best to not quit. That's right. That's right. While you're on this race. But God, because God, the, the God I serve, the patient praying believers are blessed by God with the strength in their trials and tribulations. When you go through situations of life, what happens when you go through situations of life? You feel weak, right? Uh -huh. 
You feel like you because it's so much because when it rains, it pours. So on one side, you got this going on. On the other side, you got that going on. And as a pastor, you got this going on. And you got the church going on. You got your work going on, your other job going on. You got this going. It's so much. But I'm so glad that God has the capacity and that he's able to give <laughs> strength to the weak. So whenever I'm feeling weak, I go to God in prayer and I say, Lord, I need you right now. And see me, I'm like David. I get, I become like David. And I begin to talk to God like he's my daddy. And I say, I say daddy, I need you right now. Daddy, I need your help right now. See, I need you because I can't go, I can't do all this by myself. But if I call on your name, I know you'll come through. When I call on your name, I know you'll come get the enemy off of me. When I call on your name, I know you'll kill every snake that's in your sight. When I call on your name, I know you'll remove everything that's not for me, around me, away from me. When I call on your name, I know you'll heal my body. When I call on your name, I know you'll bless me. Because you're God all by yourself. And he'll do exceedingly the best of all you can ever. That's the thing. He who started a good thing, who started it, will finish it. If God before you, who can be? Right. And I'm going to close with these two. I told you it's a little different today, but this is what God put on my heart. Amen. Amen. The book of James. Oh boy, we could now. James chapter 5. This is the book here. It cuts like a knife. His words. James chapter 5, verses 14, 15. And I want y'all to hear this because this is very important. James chapter 5, verses 14, 15. Okay. Is anyone among you sick? Mm -hmm. Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord. Y'all hear that right? Yeah. Notice it said in the name of the Lord. Not in the name of yourself, but in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Y'all right. hear that right? Yeah. The Lord will raise them up and if they have sinned, they will be what? Forgiven. So those who are weakened by their suffering <laughs> should call for the elders of the church for strength, support, and prayer. Yeah. They have been weakened by their infirmity, not from the sin which has they have confessed, but they needed to be delivered from the suffering. How many of you need to be delivered from yeah. some type of sickness? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I have pain at times. Yeah. There's things right. that goes on. As I get older, I'm realizing more complications are coming. Come on, come on. I know you're right. I must work the works of him that has sent me while it is day. While I'm young, because when night, night cometh, no man can what? Work. That's a true statement. Right. And I'm realizing that as I go to the doctor and stuff, I'm like, what? I got what? How did that? <laughs> but I'm realizing these things as I get older. Certain things are not working out like it used to. Like it used to. Yeah. But it's still working in my favor. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. How certain illnesses can work yeah. in your favor. Yeah. That's why Paul said, I boast in my affirmities. Not in my gifts. Not that I can heal. Not that I can preach. Not that I can write all these epistles. But I boast in my sickness. I boast in my mess. I boast in what's going on in my body. I boast in You know why I boast in all these things? Because it's grace. It's sufficient enough for me to stand. His grace on top of grace. His grace is just poured everywhere. His grace is poured on top of diabetes. His grace is poured on top of cancer. His grace is poured on top of lung disease. His grace is poured on top of kidney disease. His grace is poured on top of blood disease. His grace is on top of grace. His grace in his mercy. And then I'm closing out. It said 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter. If you're in second, you missed it. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 
And it says he who himself bore our sins in, the, in his body on the tree. <laughs> How many believe that? That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Yeah, that's it, that's it. And that's 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. He, whom, he himself bore our sins. Yes, he did. On the tree. Yes, he did. That's what we that's what we come for. Mm -hmm. That's what we serve him for. We serve him because we have a we serve a God who died and got up. That's right. He's, he's a living God. Yes, he is. With all power yes, in, in heaven and in earth. That's, right. that's what we serve. That's who we serve. That's right. And the thing about this, he says, by he said, and then the thing about the wounds, and the thing about my wounds, and because because I was wounded for your transgressions, I was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and he said, "What? Invite my stripes, you are what? There's healing. Somebody holler out, there's healing in the room. Come on, you gotta speak it. There's healing in the room. There's deliverance in the room." And it's just not about healing of sickness. It's not just about that type of healing. That's healing of the mind. That's healing. Healing of your, of your heart that's been broken. That's healing. Healing, healing, healing. That's healing in the room. It's not just about physical healing. It's talking about spiritual healing also. There's spiritual healing. There's physical healing. Of every disease of sin, God has healed you from. And it was on the tree. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And that's what he's talking about. It was on the tree that I was saved. It was on the tree that he brought me out. It was on the tree that he changed my mind. It was on the tree that he turned my life around. It was on the tree that God did. Somebody out loud, God did it. It wasn't nobody else. God did it. It wasn't the pastor. It wasn't the preacher. Somebody out loud, God did it. He did it on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus, the Son of Nazareth, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the leader of every disciple at that, that time, Jesus, Jesus, my God, Elohim, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, Jesus. The Bible says that when they put him on the cross, they nailed his right hand, one for the Father. They nailed his left hand, one for the Son. They nailed his feet, one for the Holy Ghost. How many believe that our Lord was nailed on the cross for your sins? And my sin. He had so much sin upon him that God turned his back on him. It was too much. He said, Lord, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Because of the sin. My sin. Your sin. His sin. Your sin. Her sin was on Jesus Christ at the cross. Somebody holler out, thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. It's through the cross. It's by the cross. It's in the cross. That we are saved today. I thank God for Jesus. The Bible says it didn't stop there. He could have called 10,000 angels to come to his rescue. He could have called the angels to get him off the cross. But the Bible Says that he stayed there on the cross. Didn't say a mumbling word until it came to that great moment. That great moment. He said, Father, Father, I commend my spirit unto thee. That's good news. That's great news. That's why we're here right now today to celebrate. Celebrate and to worship Jesus Christ, the one who died. His redeeming power, his healing power, his delivering power, his power that gives us joy, his power that gives us peace, his power that gives us deliverance, his power that gives us forgiveness, his power, the power, somebody hold on the power, the power of Jesus. That's why I'm here today. The power of Jesus. I shouldn't have been here. I should have been dead. Sleeping in my grave. But Jesus. Jesus. You made old death behave. I'm so glad tonight. 
know that I serve a God, not Buddha, not Confucius. No, I don't serve none of them, but I serve a living God because they still in their grave. But I thank God that Jesus, Jesus, put in the bar tomb after he gave up the ghost. The Bible says when the Marys and John went to the bar tomb the next morning to give him to put his vices on his body to bathe him so he wouldn't stink. So the stench wouldn't come out. The Bible says there was an angel sitting on top of the tomb. Matthew 28. He said, I was sitting on top of the tomb. He looked down at the mirrors. He said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's not here. He has risen. And he said, God has risen in me. God has risen in you. Isn't that good news? Shouting news. That's what it new. That the God we serve has risen in our hearts. The God we serve has risen in our spirit, man. So let the redeem of the Lord say so. And I'm so glad it didn't stop there. So the Rose, the Bible says that they were looking for me. Something happened. Somebody say something happened. Something magnificent happened. Something immaculate happened. Something glorious happened. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. When I first read it as a kid. Oh my God. I couldn't comprehend it. But now that I'm a man. I understand. Now that I have the spirit within me. I understand. But the Bible says. That he got up. With all power. In heaven and earth. And when he got up, I got up. When he got up, you got up. I knew you got up. You're not the same anymore. You know, you're different. And that's why I'm so glad today that when Jesus got up, he got up in us. Somebody call out hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap of praise. The door of the church opened. His healing power. His healing power. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street. Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.